Welcome to this tutorial on Ambulance Basics, Payment Rules and Billing. The information given in this training is correct as of October 2021. The most current information contained in this presentation can be found on the Neridian Medicare website and the CMS website at the links listed on this slide. This is information relating to the COVID-19 pandemic and ambulance. During the Public Health Emergency, PHE, for the COVID-19 pandemic, CMS is temporarily expanding the list of allowable destination for ambulance transports. During the PHE, ambulance transports may include any destination that is able to provide treatment to the patient in a manner consistent with state and local emergency medical services, EMS, protocols in use where the services are being furnished. These destinations may include, but are not limited to, any location that is an alternative site determined to be part of a hospital, critical access hospital, skilled nursing facility, community mental health centers, federally qualified health centers, physician's offices, urgent care facilities, ambulatory surgery centers, any other location furnishing dialysis services outside of the ESRD facility and the beneficiary's home. Ground Ambulance Services Waiver for Treatment in Place Effective March 1st, 2020, where the following criteria are satisfied. Medicare pays for ground ambulance services without a transport during the COVID-19 public health emergency. The ground ambulance service was furnished in response to a 911 call or the equivalent in areas without a 911 call system, and the patient would have been transported to a destination permitted under Medicare regulations, but the transport did not occur as a result of community-wide emergency medical service protocols due to the COVID-19 PHE, and the patient's condition required the level of service provided and would normally require transport by ambulance absent the community-wide EMS protocols. In other words, any other means of transportation would have been contraindicated. Learn more about the waiver for treatment in place and COVID-19 on this list of resources. MLN article, fact sheet, blanket waiver, and FAQs. Payment under the fee schedule for ambulance services includes a base rate payment plus a separate payment for mileage. Also covers both the transport of the beneficiary to the nearest appropriate facility and all items and services associated with such transport. And does not include a separate payment for items and services furnished under the ambulance benefit. Such items and services include but are not limited to oxygen, drugs, extra attendance, and EKG testing, but only when such items and services are both medically necessary and covered by Medicare under the ambulance benefit. For additional information on the fee schedule, providers suppliers may refer to the Ambulance Service Center on the CMS website. Remember that the procedure codes must reflect the type of service the beneficiary received, not the vehicle used. All ambulance suppliers had to accept assignment with Medicare, which simply means the check goes to you, the supplier, not the patient, and that you have agreed to accept our allowable as payment. Providers can only bill the patient any unmet Part B deductible, Part B coinsurance, and any non-covered charges. They cannot unbundle anything else to bill the patient, like oxygen. Ambulance codes have their own fee schedule, which is listed here. Ambulance inflation factor, AIF, is used to determine the payment limit for ambulance services. Air and ground ambulance mileage rates adjusted by yearly ambulance inflation factor. Refer to the Ambulance Fee Schedule on the CMS website 
for information on breakdown of fees scheduled amounts. In the IOM in 100-2, Chapter 10, Section 10.3, it states, As a general rule, only local transportation by ambulance is covered, and therefore, only mileage to the nearest appropriate facility equipped to treat the patient is covered. If you are transporting a patient beyond what would be considered as the closest facility, please document the exceptions on the claim. For instance, the closest facility is five miles away, yet when you contact them, they tell you that they have no beds available, so you are diverted to another hospital 10 miles away. Note in your documentation the circumstances of this transport in the comments field or item 19 of the 1500 form. The distance to the second facility would be covered because at the time of transport, the second facility was the closest one able to treat the patient. Medicare doesn't consider additional mileage beyond the closest facility if there is no medical need or justification. Exceptions such as cardiologist is not available or no beds available, etc. The mileage code to use is A0888 for those non-covered miles. On the claim form, this would be the third line after the base rate and covered miles. When you bill, you still want to reflect the normal modifiers of where you started and ended. Then append the additional modifier GY so you can collect from the patient making the beneficiary liable. Unless, of course, if the supplier is liable, leave the GY modifier off the code. The codes for air mileage are listed here. Fixed wing code is A0435 and rotary wing is A0436. As a general rule, the air ambulance transport destination must be local which means that only mileage to the nearest appropriate facility equipped to treat the beneficiary is covered. If two or more facilities meet this requirement and can appropriately treat the beneficiary, the full mileage to any of these facilities is covered. Medicare will pay the base rate and mileage for a medically necessary ambulance transport to the nearest appropriate facility. If the transport is to a facility that is not the nearest appropriate facility, the beneficiary is only responsible for additional mileage to his or her preferred facility. Full mileage covered if two or more facilities meet requirements and can appropriately treat beneficiary. If air transport meets criteria for medical necessity, Medicare pays actual miles flown for legitimate reasons as determined by Medicare contractor once the beneficiary is loaded onto air ambulance. Additional mileage may be allowed if incurred due to circumstances beyond the pilot's control. Medicare may cover these conditions when the transport needed to be a further hospital destination, therefore creating extenuating circumstances. Maybe it's because the hospital closest was not taking patients or on diversion. This could include no available beds, weather, or other reasons. If possible, note the diverting hospital person's name and who gave direction. Or in some rural areas, certain equipment or specialist, neurologist, orthopedic surgeon, is not available at the closest hospital. When billing for ground mileage, use A0425 code. Medicare pays for the loaded miles only. In other words, those miles traveled while the patient was on board. Medicare does not pay for miles traveled to the point of pickup. Providers must submit fractional mileage using a decimal in the appropriate place. Contractors sell truncate mileage units with fractional amounts reported to a greater than one decimal place. 
Example, 99.99 .99 will become 99.9 .99 after truncating the hundredths place. For mileage totaling less than one mile, a zero prior to the decimal point is used for claims processing. A special modifier should be used when providing ambulance transportation when more than one patient is on board. In addition to the origin destination modifier, an ambulance provider or supplier would need to bill each line of service with a GM modifier in the second position. The most common occurrence would be at the scene of an accident. It doesn't matter whether all of the injured parties that are transported were Medicare patients. For billing, append modifier GM and reflect the number of patients in the comment narrative line 19 or electronic equivalent. Bill the full trip charge amount and Noridian will calculate the correct amounts with deductible and coinsurance amounts prorated. For multiple trips for same patient same day, if the zip code for multiple trips is the same point of pickup or POP, then more than one ambulance trip can be reported on the same claim. If different zip codes, just make sure to prepare a separate claim for each trip. It's possible that the second claim may be denied as duplicate, so utilize your appeal rights within the 120 days. Medicare does not regulate the compensation between the BLS entity and the ALS entity. If there is no agreement between the BLS ambulance supplier and the ALS entity furnishing the service, then only the BLS level of payment can be made. In this situation, the ALS entity services are not covered and the beneficiary is liable for the expense of the ALS service. Special rules and a specific modifier apply when dealing with patients who have elected coverage under Medicare's hospice benefit. If you are transporting a hospice patient for the services related to their hospice condition, you would bill the hospice directly for your services. Ambulance transports that are unrelated to the beneficiary's terminal illness or that occur on the same day as either the start or the end date of hospice care services are billable to Part B. To submit a claim for services unrelated to hospice, bill Part B with the origin and destination modifier in the first position on the claim and add a GW modifier in the second modifier position. All other coverage criteria for ambulance transports must be met. Hospice can be confusing for ambulance transports. Just remember these two clarifications. For conditions related to hospice, submit to hospice. If unrelated, submit to Part B with an appended GW modifier. Documentation must support the patient was transferred from a facility or to a different facility for problems unrelated to the hospice diagnosis. For example, perhaps they fell and sprained or fractured their ankle. Outside of the PHE, if you do not transport the patient, then you do not have a covered service under the Medicare program per CR 7489 dated January 2012. Remember, a claim doesn't need to be submitted to Medicare for non-covered or statutorily excluded services. However, if a patient requests you submit the non-covered A0998 for denial so that their secondary insurance may allow, go ahead and know it will be denied as patient responsibility. Ambulances have the choice, either bill the patient directly for a base rate, without mileage of course, or bill with HCPCS A0998, appending the GY modifier and in item 19 narrative comments field or the NTE02 electronically, state something like no transport or patient refused transport. The use of the advanced beneficiary notice ABN is not needed. 
However, this ABN form can be used voluntarily as a means of outlining a patient's financial liability, but only for non-emergent transports. Patients can never be asked to sign under duress or emergency. On February 9, 2018, the President signed into law the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018. This new law includes several provisions related to Medicare payment. Section 50203, the Medicare Ambulance Services. The new law extends the following two expiring ambulance payment provisions. The 3% increase in the ambulance fee schedule rates for covered ground ambulance transports that originate in rural areas and the 2% increase in the ambulance fee schedule rates for the covered ground ambulance transports that originate in urban areas are extended through December 31st, 2022. And the increase in the base rate of the fee schedule for covered ground ambulance transports originating in a rural area that is within the lowest 25th percentile of all rural areas arrayed by population density, known as the super rural add-on, is extended through December 31st, 2022. No new provider action is necessary for implementation. The next few slides will provide 1500 claim form instructions for ambulance billing. Item 19 says reserved for local use. This is the electronic equivalent of this paper narrative comment line. Please reflect the EMT paramedic interface with the patient, such as blood pressure, pulse, or any other symptom going on at the time of the transport. Item 21 has up to four diagnosis codes and it's fine to reflect those, but remember that paramedic EMTs do not diagnose. Item 23 zip code for the point of pickup. Because the zip code is used for pricing, more than one ambulance service may be reported on the same claim for a beneficiary if all points of pickup are located in the same zip code. However, suppliers must prepare a separate claim form for each trip if the points of pickup are located in different zip codes. A claim without a zip code or with multiple zip codes will be denied as unprocessable. More information on the claim form and box 24. Under 24A, to and from dates of service. 24B is the place of service, 41 ground or 42 air. Item 24D, HIC picks base and mileage rates along with appropriate modifiers on both. 24E links the diagnosis, 24F has the charges, 24G is the number of dates equaling one and the number of patient loaded miles. This slide addresses the CMS 1500 instructions for item 32. The originating site information must be entered in item 32. Ambulance suppliers are required to submit both origination and destination information. It is recommended to have the facility name, city, state, and zip code. The street address is not required. If there's not enough space for destination information in item 32, providers must enter this information in item 19. The origin and destination modifiers will identify the type of facility the beneficiary was transported to. When the transport is beyond the closest facility, suppliers are required to briefly identify why and that information is also placed in item 19. The next three slides show the origin and destination modifier information. When these modifiers are incorrectly used, the entire claim is denied as a billing error for incorrect modifier usage. Currently, many ambulances are billing incorrectly with modifiers H or D. If these are ESRD, use for dialysis facilities either G or J. D also includes radiation treatment, cancer, or therapy centers on the hospital campus. 
think of this as a freestanding outpatient site like Ambulatory Surgical Center or IDTF. Please note that R refers to private residents only and that N also includes swing bed or hospice. Remember, if you are unsure what modifier to use for either origin or destination, please refer to this presentation or visit our website for more details. Here are the additional origin destination modifiers. Hospital H. This modifier must be submitted for an inpatient psychiatric facility located at a hospital. Do not use H as a destination modifier for clinic or office. Use P instead. The reason for an ambulance transport versus other means of transport must be very clear on the run ticket and, if applicable, the transferring physician's notes. The most important way an ambulance can prevent billing errors is to utilize correct modifiers in the correct order. X is a destination modifier only, which also includes stopping at a freestanding urgent care or ER facility that is non-hospital based on the way to the hospital. Modifier S represents the scene of pickup, accident or acute event, and is an origin code only. It is not to be used for any residence, regardless if it is the beneficiary's residence or one they are visiting at the time of transport. A few examples of when it is appropriate to use the S modifier are bus stop, park, street corner, mile post, road, boat or cruise ship at dock in U.S. waters. Listed here are the ambulance modifier auto denials. Trips with one of these origin destination modifiers are not covered and should not be submitted to Medicare. You can bill the patient directly for these services. If you need to bill for a denial, please bill with modifier GY. If you disagree, an appeal would need to be sent along with medically necessary documentation. There are several reasons that these were chosen. Either they don't make sense, such as SS, meaning scene of an accident to another scene of an accident, or B, one or the other, origin or destination or both, are not feasible. The Advanced Beneficiary Notice of Non-Coverage, ABN, are rare for ambulance and never used for emergencies. The ABN is to be understood by the patient, signed and dated before the non-emergency service is rendered. State the specific reasons and procedures for the non-emergency transports. A space on the ABN lets you write the estimated cost so the patient can make an informed consumer's decision for these non-emergency services. In general, a notifier may not issue an ABN to a beneficiary who has a medical emergency or is under similar duress. Forcing delivery of an ABN during an emergency may be considered coercive. ABN usage in the ER may be appropriate in some cases where the beneficiary is medically stable with no emergent health issues. Issuance of the ABN is mandatory for ambulance transport services if all of the following three criteria are met. Number one, the service being provided is a Medicare covered ambulance benefit. Number two, the provider believes that the service may be denied in part or in full as not reasonable and necessary. And number three, the ambulance service is being provided in a non-emergency situation. The patient is not under duress. ABN issuance is mandatory only when a beneficiary's covered ambulance transport is modified to a level that is not medically reasonable and necessary and will incur additional costs. Simplified. There are three questions to ask when determining if an ABN is required for an ambulance transport. If the answer to all of the following three questions is yes, an ABN must be issued. Number one, 
Is this service a covered ambulance benefit? Number two, will payment for part or all of this service be denied because it is not reasonable and necessary? And number three, is the patient stable and the transport non-emergent? If an ambulance transport is statutorily excluded from coverage because it fails to meet Medicare's definition of the ambulance benefit, a voluntary ABN may be issued to notify the beneficiary of his or her financial liability as a courtesy. Per the Medicare Ambulance Benefit and Statutory Basis for Denial of Claims, do not use ABNs for technical denials of ambulance services. An ABN isn't needed and should not be used in the following situations. A, any denial where the patient could be transported safely by other means. B, any denial that is based on not meeting an origin or destination requirement. C, a denial for mileage that is beyond the nearest appropriate facility. D, a denial with a physician certification statement or accepted alternative is not obtained. E, a convenience discharge. Example, where the patient is an inpatient at one hospital that can care for their needs, but wants to be transferred to a second hospital to be closer to family for the same reason as B above. Not obtaining an ABN in these technical denial situations does not prevent the supplier or provider from collecting denied charges from the beneficiary. The issuance of an ABN is mandatory only when a beneficiary's covered ambulance transport is modified to a level that is not medically reasonable and necessary and will incur additional costs. These two non-covered modifiers would only be used in non-emergency situations and only when the patient is not under any duress. We rarely see ambulance suppliers using modifier GA, which just says that you had the patient fill out a CMS form titled Advanced Beneficiary Notice of Non-Coverage, or ABN, before the services were rendered and that they agreed this claim would become their financial responsibility. With the GY modifier, the transport is statutorily excluded or does not meet the definition of any Medicare benefit, such as return trips back to the home or other residing facility. Here's a copy of the revised current ABN, which can be found at the link listed here. This is a CMS official form that protects provider rights and changes the financial responsibility to the patient. It is also located on the Noridian website under Forms. The ABN is to be understood by the patient, signed and dated before the non-emergency service is rendered. State the specific reasons and procedures for this non-emergency transport. A space on the ABN lets you write the estimated cost, so the patient can make an informed consumer's decision for these non-emergency services. Included on this slide are examples for Part B or A billing. The left side is billed to Part B. Besides the obvious, not listed here, of a SNF to hospital or CA transport for inpatient admission or emergency services are covered. The return back to the SNF would be billed to Part B, trips taking the patient to the SNF for admission, the sniff after discharge to the beneficiary's home, where the beneficiary will receive services from a Medicare participating home health agency under a plan of care, a hospital-based or non-hospital-based ESRD facility, from one sniff to another when the patient is not in a Part A stay and the transfer is medically necessary. In the outpatient hospital, a few of these services are cardiac catheterization, CT scans, MRIs. The right side is billed as SNF Part A responsibility. If a patient is transferred from one SNF to another, if the patient is traveling from the SNF to a doctor's office and returning. Likewise, trips to an independent diagnostic testing facility 
IDTF, Cancer Treatment Center, Radiation Therapy Center, and Wound Care Center would be responsibility of the SNF, as would the return trips. The CMS Internet-only manuals are the rules regulations that govern the Medicare program found at cms.gov forward slash manuals with a couple of those publications listed here. The CMS Ambulance Service Center webpage has the information on fee schedules, articles, open door forums, etc. Medicare Ground Ambulance Data Collection System, CMS has a dedicated ambulance page for those providers who have been selected. Effective January 1st and continuing through 2024, Ground Ambulance providers and suppliers that have been selected to participate in the Medicare Ground Ambulance Data Collection System must collect information on cost, utilization, revenue, and other service characteristics in accordance with the Medicare Ground Ambulance Data Collection Instrument for a continuous 12-month period. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our tutorial. Continue your learning experience by referring to additional recordings available on the Noridian website or YouTube channel.